Each engine is equipped with a thrust reverser system for normal landing and rejected takeoff operations. Each thrust reverser consists of a left and right translating sleeve. Aft movement of the translating sleeves cause blocker doors to deflect air forward through fixed cascade guide vanes. This causes reverse thrust. For normal operation, engine number one thrust reverser uses hydraulic system A pressure. And engine number two thrust reverser uses hydraulic system B pressure. If there is a failure of hydraulic system A or B, the standby hydraulic system is the emergency source of pressure for the two thrust reverser systems. In this example, hydraulic system A failed. To use the thrust reversers, the airplane must be on the ground with the forward thrust levers at idle. The reverse thrust levers are on the control stand. Each reverse thrust lever has five positions, stowed, interlock stop, and three positions of reverse, detent 1, detent 2, and maximum reverse. There are two thrust reverser system indicators, the reverser light on the engine panel and the reverser indication above the N1 indications. During pre-flight and normal in-flight operations, the reverse thrust levers are in the full down or stowed position. In this position, the translating sleeves are stowed and locked. A mechanical interlock in the thrust lever assembly prevents movement of the forward and reverse thrust levers at the same time. The forward thrust levers must be in the idle position before the reverse thrust levers can be moved. Raise the reverse thrust levers to the interlock stop position to see how the engine number one thrust reverser system operates. The initial motion of the reverse thrust levers releases the electromechanical lock and unlocks the translating sleeves. Next, the isolation valve opens if the air ground sensor is in the ground mode or a radio altimeter shows altitude of less than 10 feet. With the isolation valve open, the control valve moves to the deploy position. And hydraulic pressure starts to move the translating sleeves to the deployed position. An amber reverser indication illuminates above the engine N1 indication. It shows the translating sleeves are in transit. An interlock mechanism restricts further movement of the reverse thrust levers until the sleeves are near the deployed position. As the sleeves reach the deployed position, the reverse thrust levers can be raised to detent number two. When the sleeves are deployed, the amber reverser indication changes to green. Raise the reverse thrust levers to detent number two.
In detents number two, the EEC sets sufficient reverse thrust for normal operation. If maximum reverse is necessary, you can raise the reverse thrust levers beyond detent number two. Now raise the reverse thrust levers to the maximum reverse position. The EEC now sets maximum reverse thrust. When reverse thrust is no longer necessary, lower the reverse thrust levers to detent number one. In detent number one, the EEC now sets a minimum idle. Now lower the reverse thrust levers to the stowed position. The control valve moves to the stow position. and hydraulic pressure moves the sleeves to the stowed position. The green reverser indication changes to amber and shows the sleeves are in transit. After the sleeves are stowed, the isolation valve closes The electromechanical lock engages and the reverser indication extinguishes. Let's look at some non-normal thrust reverser conditions. The thrust reverser system has an auto resto feature. The auto resto system compares the actual translating sleeve position and the commanded reverse lever position. In the event of an incomplete stow, or if a translating sleeve is sensed out of the stow position, The auto resto system opens the isolation valve and directs hydraulic pressure to stow the reverser. If the auto resto system is activated, the isolation valve remains open and the control valve is held in the stow position until corrective maintenance action is taken. or the thrust reverser is deployed normally. If the isolation valve or the selector valve is not in the commanded position, the reverser light on the aft overhead panel illuminates. In this example, the reverse thrust levers are stowed, but the number one engine isolation valve is open. The reverser light also illuminates if the auto resto circuit is activated or if the positions of the left and right translating sleeves on each engine do not agree. Since the light can illuminate during normal operation of the reverser, there is a time delay before the master caution and engine system annunciation lights illuminate. Reset the master caution system. With the reverser light illuminated, flight crews should be aware that additional system failures can cause in-flight deployment of the reversers. 
However, you can expect normal reverser operation after landing. If the reverser indication illuminates in flight, the indication is incorrect. Or a translating sleeve is mechanically unlocked. If a translating sleeve has mechanically unlocked, the forward thrust lever may be restricted and the unstowed sleeve can produce some yaw or buffet. The affected engine must be shut down. If the forward thrust lever is not restricted and no buffet or yaw exists, the reverser indication is incorrect and the affected engine can be operated normally.